that an evaluator has given you? What's been the most painful piece of feedback you've ever received? Who is your favorite evaluator, evaluator in our club? Do you know why you like them? Good feedback helps everyone improve, and learning to give the right balance of both positive and critical feedback is essential to a good evaluation. But there's another key element to effective evaluations that Tracy will be sharing in this educational speech this morning. Her goals are to sink our teeth deeper into the sandwich technique and introduce some new ingredients that will spice up our evaluations. This is not a manual speech. The speech, speech length is five to seven minutes. Dr. Elizabeth Corley did an experiment to see how people learned and responded. And she was with a class of fourth, and six, fifth, and sixth graders, in one room schoolhouse. And she split them up into three groups. She asked one of the third to leave the, the school room. And then she evaluated the rest of the class on their, how well they were doing in math. said you are improving in math, she gave praise to, they did, 71% of them improved in their math. The other third that she gave critical feedback to on their math skills improved 19%. The third of the class that didn't get any feedback at all, or were virtually ignored, only got 5% improvement in their math. Pretty interesting on feedback, huh? So if we move this up into the day, in 19, or 2013, Harvard Business Review ran an article on a study with a group of professional leader or, or business groups, leaderships, to find out how people responded to feedback. They discovered that there is a rule that you have to give five positive remarks to every one negative remark in order for someone to really respond. So how do we take this information and apply it to what we're doing right now in our evaluations? It's pretty interesting. This one to five ratio makes it hard. So let's just do a little review on our current technique that we use. It's the sandwich technique. We all know this. It's the bun. You start with what they did good, you give them a little meat for where they can improve, and you end with something that you really liked, or it was another piece of positive feedback. So what we know is that if you have critical feedback to someone, and this is how we all grow and respond, the, it's going to be absorbed better if it's more specific. So when you're doing your evaluations, you want to avoid uh, general feedback and get as specific as you can. So here's the new analogy with the new improved sandwich technique. It is called putting some flavoring on your sandwich. So I notice it starts with the bun at the bottom and you've got your meat, your critical feedback. But what you do is these, the flavoring, are examples of how they could flavor this meat to make it better. So let me give you a couple of examples of how you put this to practice. If I were to say, Fred, I really liked your speech, but I think your opening could have been stronger. Okay, that was all right. That was just general feedback. How do you get more specific? Fred, I really liked your speech, but I thought your opening could have been stronger. What if you would have taken that story that you told about your uncle in the middle of it and moved it to the beginning? Because that epitomized the whole theme and the point you were making. I suggest you move it up to the front. See, I went from general to very specific on how we could have improved the open. Next one. Okay. Annette, your, your speech content was great. There's a lot of really interesting facts in there, but I wasn't sure what the purpose of your speech was. 
I think after you told that great story at the opening, you should have gone to the purple sp statement saying, today I'm going to teach you some very positive coaching techniques. And then you went into the rest of your speech. You were missing that purpose statement. Okay. Third example. Uh, Tess, I really think that you could have used a room more. You really stayed in place. Okay. So now how do you give additional feedback on it? Tess, when you were talking, I thought, I thought you stayed in place and you could have used a room more. So for example, when you were talking about the statement about ladies, how does it feel when they tell you to you ski like a girl? Do you feel insulted or do you feel empowered? See how you could have used the room and go engage your audience So get out of the center. All right, so those are three examples of how you take your meat and your general statement and you add flavor to it so that it, you expand what you're saying. Specific feedback is countering the, the, uh, the negative because it's good critical, it's critical and specific. So in your evaluations, when you combine it with the, the more specific information, it's helping people learn. So get away from the general and go to the specific. The other part um, that I want to mention on in that I think we all struggle with. When you we have a speaker that did a great speech, but as an evaluator, you're looking at the manual and saying, I don't think that they hit these objectives. So what you know, so what do you do in that case? So basically, you ordered the manual ordered a roast beef sandwich, and John served up a chicken sandwich. So this, the, and the actual sandwich recipe is a little bit off, right? It's our job as evaluators to be truthful, okay? And so the platitudes, John, you, off, you often say this in evaluations, that you don't need to flatter people, and you don't need to patronize them. Be truthful. So if you simply state, John, I don't think you met the objectives in the speech, although your speech was good, so let's look at what you could have done or how you might have morphed this to meet your objectives better. Okay, so in summary, we want to give praise, which is the bread of our sandwich. And then for areas of improvement, that's our meat. But to make this more palatable, you want to get more specific with your, with your areas for improvement, and that's adding your vegetables, your cheese, your sauce, and your salt and peppers. So I encourage everyone, when you're doing evaluations, and maybe today you guys can help illustrate this and put it into practice, make general, don't make general observations, be very specific in your critical feedback and how they can improve. Thank you. Thank you.